All right. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our next uh, episode of uh, Let's uh, Chit Chat with Narayan Dat. Today is Wednesday. It is, uh, it's not too much of a bad um, morning. I think the road was kind of okay and so on. It was okay coming in here. So thank you for taking the time to tune into us. Uh, for those of you who happen to tune into us for the very first time, this is a local initiative with a global impact. And, from, um, and every week we have different guests people who are community-minded, um, who care about our community and so on. We've had some really great episode um, in the past. And today wouldn't be any different. I have my really good friend, um, Manny, is with us here today. Um, so thank you so much, Manny, for taking the time to come in. Well, pleasure is mine. Thanks for inviting me. All right. So we may have to adjust your little um, thing there. All right. So what we try to do, because the time goes by so fast, the one hour go, um, it goes by so fast because, you know, Everybody that have um, that came to the show so far, because of their richness and because of how much they have to share, that they one hour it flies by um, really, really, really fast. So, um, I know one thing for sure that it wouldn't be any different today because uh, Manny, a <laughs> very smart man, very knowledgeable, um, very much engaged in the community, and so it wouldn't be any different. So, what I will do? Uh, why don't you take a couple minutes or so to um, introduce yourself, letting our listeners or viewers know who you are, where you live, what you do, all of that. And then we kind of continue our conversation that way. Try to speak in here if you can. Um, I, I will adjust it just to make sure that people can hear us at home and so on. Why don't you go ahead? Thank you, Noreen. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Manny Nair. Uh, basically, my profile is not that big or high profile, just like uh, Noreen. <laughs> uh, but I'll try to describe myself in less than one minute. Uh, I've been in Canada for 18 years. I'm a proud Indo-Canadian. I always say India is my motherland and Canada is my homeland. Uh, I live in Kitchener. I'm very passionate about uh, what's going on in Canada and around the world in terms of the political process and the government policies. Uh, last year, as part of uh, uh, an initiative which was basically started by me and a couple of my friends, we, we hosted Namaste debate. So basically the objective of the debate was this was just before the provincial election. So what we wanted to do was help having a good conversation with uh, rookie and incumbent candidates from provincial and incumbent candidates from the municipal uh, government. Uh, we invited councillors, we invited MPP candidates. We just wanted to hear and we also wanted to let others know what the candidate have to say to the rest of the world or to their uh, constituents. Another thing we wanted to do was we wanted to promote uh, good Indo-Canadian candidates to come forward and run in public office. That was another uh, thing we wanted to achieve. And mo one of the most important objective of Namaste debate was to have more meaningful conversations so that more and more Canadians come and vote. In the last municipal election, we only saw 28% people voting, which is not a fair representation, right? So we want to have more and more people voting. So that will be another objective in the coming years. Uh, probably we'll see if we could host another Namaste debate during the before the federal election. Good stuff. Good stuff. You know, um, I'm glad you kind of have talked about the um, Namaste debate um, um, in your introduction there because obviously I had the opportunity to, to be part of that as well too. And um, one of the good things, uh, just before I forget, um, one of the good things about that is that, um, I mean, I ran as an independent, um, obviously, but I myself was um, was given that opportunity to kind of showcase um, what um, what I wanted to kind of, you know, um, offer to the people. And because of that, um, you know, um, you know, people get to know more of me. So I think it was a beautiful thing because um, there was a, a good mixture of, you know, of, of um, participants there, you know, uh, people from um, bigger um, and known parties, still smaller guys type of things. So I think that's a, be um, that's a beautiful thing. So, um, Normally in this show, um, and we are going to hear more, we are going to get uh, into depth um, with the Namaste debate and plans um, that um, you have um, for the group and so on. But one of the things that uh, we try to do in this show here, we try to show appreciation for life and, um, and all of that. And so one of the questions I usually ask um, guests on this show is to share with our audience or listeners um, one thing, two things, whatever that is, um, something that you are so much grateful for. So if I was to ask you, what is that one thing that you're very much grateful for, you're very appreciative, thankful for? What will that be? One, uh, if I had to pick one, that would be very like, <laughs> challenging. But mm -hmm. I would say I'm very grateful to the creator of this planet. 
which brought me here. I'm very, very grateful to my parents. I'm very grateful to my family and very important group of friends who are supporting in a common vision. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, very, very grateful for the one of the important thing in like in this planet is if you have a good health and peace of mind, I would say you are more, you should be more than happy. Good, good. That is a beautiful thing, you know, and, and too often, um, sometimes people um, forget about the simple, important things about, you mentioned about health, appreciation for life in general, and the people who are supporting you as a person to grow, and you mentioned family and, and, and all of that. And, and uh, for the first time, somebody um, ended up mentioning, which I think is crucial that you mention that, and you mentioned about the creator, because I think we are here by some higher power, you know, and, and so on. And I mean, um, and, and to show appreciation um, for that, it, it's always a beautiful thing. So thank you for sharing that with us. We appreciate that. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, um, so what made you and your friends, um, you know, are you um, in particular um, um, wanting to um, create um, a, um, a platform as such? Like what, what, what sparked you to kind of start up that idea? Because I think it's a great idea. I'm talking about the Namaste debate where um, people are able to engage themselves, um, you know, um, um, share their views on, on, on different issues and so on. So what sparked the idea? I'm assuming it has to be something. It can't be like one day you, you just wake up and say, well, let's do this. It has to be something. I'm I think it, it just started happening probably a year before when we actually uh, actually hosted the Namaste debate. It was more for what, or what I wanted to see was diversity of candidates. Mm -hmm. Right, so that was one important thing. Like, if you see Toronto GTA, you are seeing a diverse candidate groups now. Mm -hmm. uh, still, Waterloo region still has a long way to be go. But I say last two years things have been changing. There are a lot of uh, diverse people in Canada right now. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the primary objective. But my long term objective is it has nothing to do with diversity. Mm -hmm. What I believe is Canada has to be united. Mm -hmm. So we all are one Canadians. Right. Of course, we come from the first generation, always come from somewhere else mm -hmm. and migrate. But the future generation will always be like a Canadian. There won't be anything such as Indo-Canadian, Chinese Canadian, Ukrainian Canadian. Right. So the objective was to promote diversity. That was the initial. But long term goal would be any Canadian, like regardless of diversity. Yes. You know, um, um, you brought up a good point. Uh, you know, when we started off um, our annual um, um, event, um, we used to call it um, the Indo-Caribbean Dreams. But uh, we are also looking ahead and wanting to grow um, in a different way, more inclusive. And that's one of the reasons we actually removed the word Indo. And now we call it um, the, 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 um, the Caribbean Dreams, right? So right. for us, it's one step um, to, um, for us um, to tweak things as we go along, to make improvement, to really try to be inclusive and not separate ourselves with, you know, um, Indo-Caribbean or Indo-Canadian, all of that. So I like the fact that you um, started off because you saw a need, so to speak. And then, but you are also looking at a big picture and say, you know, we cannot remain this way because if we do, we are basically separating ourselves from each other, right? Because we have lots of, You'll be amazed to know, believe it or not, we have um, thousands of small groups um, in Ontario and in, in the region of Waterloo alone, um, formal and informal, we have tons of groups, you know, um, doing the little things. I, I mean, people have passion to do things and I think that's okay. But I think if we um, somehow find a way to work together with all of those um, leadership type people and all of those ideas and so on, I think we can achieve more. That's, that's, how, right. that, um, that's, how, that's how I see it. And so... Um, so I'm assuming that this is something um, you will continue with. Am I correct? Like the, 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 the group. The That's the goal, right? Yeah. Because one thing I, I noticed for sure, because as you know, I'm active on social media myself. I noticed you, you, um, you are not afraid to share views. Um, you, you keep people informed because sometimes I myself, because I mean, I can't stay on top of everything, obviously, right? So I, I, one thing I, I can commend you for, though, is to use that social media piece, the, the, the Facebook page in particular, um, to kind of um, share um, issues and matters, um, you know, that's important to the people. And sometimes in many cases, believe it or not, um, I mean, I can get those information elsewhere too, but I find that sometimes I end up seeing those information there for the, um, at first. And then I, that's when I, I'm taking the time to kind of dig a little, little bit deeper. So I think um, although you are not necessarily doing you know, gathering in terms of debate and so on. Like, there's no need right now. I'm sure that will be coming, <laughs> right? Uh, for sure, uh, because there's, there's federal election happening this year, by the way, it's, it's not a secret. Um, 
So I, I, I can see more of that happening, but, but, I, but I like the fact that um, you're continuing um, using that um, social media page as a platform to kind of keep people informed and keep people engaged as well too, because I can see people responding. Even when we had the municipal election, the result and so on, I can see that uh, what people were doing, they were even posting um, results on there because they saw that page um, as a really nice platform for people locally here. So I think that was a beautiful thing. So I just hope that um, it kind of um, uh, continue on there. So for those of you who uh, have just tuned in, uh, just to remind you that you're listening to our weekly talk show, Let's Chit Chat with Narayan Dad. We are here live every Wednesday from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. Eastern time. So make sure you take the time to um, share our page. You want to make sure um, we share our rich conversation with uh, as many people as possible. I do want to take this opportunity, though, to say hello to people. Um, we have people obviously watching from different parts um, of the world. Um, I have my good friend um, Rajib um, watching us all the way from uh, Bangladesh. So we want to say hello to him. We have local um, um, British, am I saying it correctly? Watching as well, local supporters here locally. We always like our local people, obviously. So thank you so much for that. Um, Sabi, thank you so much for taking the time to tune into us. Anil, my cousin, actually, um, watching us um, from Toronto. Roshan and Harry. Um, Harry, um, <clears throat> um, just quickly, um, Harry, we used to attend the same um, um, Monday Temple back home and so on. They're very supportive in in in, in the kind of um, in the initiative that uh, that we do there and so on. So um, he lives in the states now, but they always still find a way to support um, the kind of things um, um, I do. So I do appreciate that. So what we are going to do? We're going to take a short break. We're going to be right back. Um, time goes by really fast. Uh, believe it or not, fifty minutes is already done here. But when we come back, um, you're in the, you're gonna get to know a little bit more um, of Manny. We're gonna share more about his passion for community thing. You know, him and I we have had many one-on-one -on -one conversations in the past, and they're usually rich conversation. One of the things that I really like about him is that when he has an idea, he take it he takes it to the next level, and I think that's key, and that really um, draw my attention as well too. Because for me, having an idea is just having an, an idea. You really have to take things to the next level. So again, you're listening to Let's Chit Chat with Narayan Dad. We are here live on 102.7 CKMS FM. Keep in mind, you can also listen to us on Rogers Digital Cable 946. For those of you who have the Rogers, Rogers Digital Box, and of course, worldwide on the web, songfm.ca.
All right, welcome back to our weekly talk show. Let's chit chat with Narayan Dat. I have with me um, a very good friend, um, our special guest today, um, Manny, um, um, who share obviously um, um, some of his beliefs, you know, in terms of community development. Um, and he's a strong, um, um, he, he, yeah, for some reason, he really likes politics, which is not a bad thing because, you know, the way I look at politics um, is a way, uh, if you, for me personally, if you get into the politics for the right reason, it is a really good way to serve the people. That's how I, I see it. And speaking of that, um, Obviously, we've had the municipal election recently, and I want your views on that. But before we do that, I want to quickly say hello to uh, my good friend, um, Dave, listening um, and watching us all the way from the United States. Thank you so much, sir. And um, Naga, Naga and, uh, and we are good friends. We work together, believe it or not, in the past. So I know Naga really well. Thank you so much, Naga, for taking the time. I'm with Manny here, as you can um, see. So, yeah, so... I mean, we all have our own um, different perspective based on election. You know, there's, um, there's only certain things that we can do as individual, all of that um, and those type of things. So in your opinion, how did you think it went? You know, what are some of the, you know, I don't want to ask you so many things at once, but anything you want to share in terms of like, what are some of the issues you think we're facing here? Not necessarily in Kitchen Waterloo, but in the region as a whole. What are some of the things you are seeing or hearing from people? I think in terms of uh, if you're referring specific to the at the time of election or post-election. Come a little bit closer if you can. I want sure. to make sure people can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, fantastic. If you're referring to the election, I would say it went well, but the only thing I'm very disappointed is the vote share, 28 persons. So all the electoral representative who have been elected, they only they are representing only 28 persons. So the, now the question is, what is happening with the remaining? Are they disengaged? They don't want to vote? or there are some other reasons like they don't care or what's happening. So that's the other thing. Uh, I know like, like back in India, there is an option on the, because most of the time when you go and vote is you're doing on an electronic machine. Mm -hmm. So there is an option for none of the above. We don't have that option here. So we should have that because right now we don't know whether people are not mm. coming because they don't want to vote or they don't like the candidate. I like that option actually. It's probably not a bad thing. Eh? Yeah. Because um, that way, because if people are saying to themselves, well, they have to make a decision, right? And if they don't have that option, they pretty much are, are making a decision, but but probably not 100% happy with that decision. Yeah. So having that option is probably not a bad thing. And that way, they can start to keep data and you can see what's happening. If it's a few, you know, it probably wouldn't matter. But if it's uh, many people are saying, well, none of the above, none of the above, maybe that's something we really need to look into. So if, let's say if 72% of the people didn't vote or don't want to vote, what does it say about our democracy? In a lot of parts of the world, if you see people don't have rights to votes, they have dictators uh, ruling the country, they don't have peace, like they are basically hungry to vote. And mm -hmm. here we have the privilege, but still people don't vote. So that has to be addressed and it has to be like, at uh, the government level and at the community level, it, that has to be discussed why this is happening. Mm -hmm. The other is in Australia, there is an op uh, where they basically force people to vote. If not, they are fined. Yes, I've, right? I've heard of that. I'm aware of that so, as well. But a lot of people say it's, so this is the thing. So a lot of people talk about my rights. Mm -hmm. It's my right. I don't want to vote. And what are you going mm -hmm. to tell those people? I don't want to write. So, but democracy is a privilege. Yeah. And, if this continues, that I don't know how that power balance equation happen, like go in the future. You know, um, I mean, obviously, for the people them who know me, they they knew that I ran as well too. So, what are some of the reasons you think, um, you know, um, people are not voting um, or not taking the time to do so? Because I mean, I'm running, putting your name to run, obviously it takes a lot of time, effort, and so on. And, and going to vote is basically, um, it's not that difficult, right? You just have to make some time. But in your opinion, or based on what you hear from people, like what's the reason behind it, you think? I think one of the reasons which I would consider it as a misused word is, my life is very busy, right? I'm busy. So <laughs> now the question yeah, is, I'm busy. I'm busy too, you, right? can, uh, you can spend mm -hmm. the whole day sitting in front of the phone, mm -hmm. and you can say, I'm busy. Right, you can be somewhere else and say I'm busy. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. The other is one of the important factors. Mm -hmm. What I've seen is people are disengaged. So it's both sides. So I would say in democracy, the engagement has to happen from the government level 
and from the people level. So how engaged people are. So that was another objective of Namaste debate to have conversation, mm -hmm. ongoing conversation, which is very important in democracy. Mm -hmm. If you just have conversation, generally in the Canadian politics, most of the time the conversation is happening probably six months before the election, mm -hmm. right? And I think that has to change. We have to have an ongoing, ongoing conversation, conversation, right? People Come. may agree or disagree. That's totally different. Yeah. But at least a conversation has to go on. That is very important. I uh, yes, I, I have to agree with you um, on that. And I think that's one of the reasons why we actually, um, myself, for example, you know, and that's one of the reasons we are continuing this kind of conversation. Because for me, it's not about campaigning when there's an election, you know, six months before, a few months before, you know, trying to kind of engage people then because, uh, um, you know, um, not one, um, one thing is hard to do, but and the second thing is that that's not the right way to do it, really. When you have an ongoing conversation, I think things start to make more sense, you know, people can engage, hopefully, you know, um, a lot better kind of thing. So the ongoing conversation, it, it makes total sense as well. So in terms of improvement then, um, um, what um, I, you probably uh, can answer a little bit of that, but in terms of improvement, you know, how do you get people to, to, to be engaged? I mean, like we are trying our best, you know, um, you are here, you know, people are coming, people are sharing, you know, people are emailing us, they're sharing their piece here and there, but how do we get more people? Because think about it, 72% of the people did not vote for whatever the reason may be, right? Um, so that's a, that's a big number, you know, and so that's, that, that's a concern I'm thinking, right? Yeah. I think one of the important places to start would be basically sort of a reform in the education system because it has to start at a very young age. Mm -hmm. Right. And like mostly in India, like people are very much engaged. Sometimes I would say they're too much engaged into politics. Right. You have to have a fine balance to it, but it's always good. I think in education, like we have political science at a very, right, yeah. at a very elementary level. So you know what's going on in politics and you know, all this parliament, municipal government, all this has to start from there. So I would say that would be a good start. Yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's probably um, yes, it's probably they probably need to go a little bit more in depth to um, you know um, as well too because it's nice to know who the representatives are. Exactly, yeah. It's nice to know like the basic you know um, what are the responsibilities you know if something, if 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 they need anything you know to get a, a jump start in life or whatever the case and be like who can I go to you know um, all of these types of things. So I think um you know, having that kind of basic knowledge probably would be a good start for sure because the younger generation, because believe it or not, you know, um, I mean, um, the, the, the kids them who are 40 now, um, they will be eligible to vote, you know, a few years from now, so to speak. So it's nice to start, um, um, you know, at that level, I think it makes a lot Another of sense. Another thing we sure. could also do is lower the voting age. So right now, I think the voting age is 18. That's right. I would say, why can't we go with 16? If at 16, you can have a driver's license. I'm assuming uh at 16 you i would say the youngsters know how to drive so I'm, we are basically consider them as an adult sort of like in terms of driving so why can't we change the voter and that would also encourage youngsters to come and vote you know um so these are first of all these are all really great ideas so i, I i'm hoping somebody's watching here who will reach out back to us and say you know what i've heard you guys talk about you know all of these pieces and share all these ideas so what is it that we can do next? I hope that we are going to have some of that. And keep in mind, for those of you who are not comfortable um, putting your comment um, um, in the open there, you can send us um, any kind of comment and things of that kind to mcnorine at hotmail.com. Um, please do that. Um, and so um, even after the end of the show, um, we can um, continue some great conversation. As you mentioned, we want to have an ongoing kind of conversation. So make sure you share our page as well, too. So what we are going to do, we are going to take a very short break. And when we come back... Um, we will be talking a little bit about, um, I want to talk a little bit about federal election. And the reason being, um, here in Canada, obviously, we have different levels of government. We have federal, provincial, municipal, and all of that. Um, but because um, this is the year, this will be a very hot, interesting year. I'm actually, for some reason, I'm really looking forward for this year. Because this is federal. This is big deal, you know. Because this, um, this can break or, or make things. So I am very interested to hear, um, um, you know, um, your perspective as to what, you know, um, um, when it comes to this federal election. Um, your perspective is, um, is, um, is more important as well, too. So if there's anything you want to, um, to share with us or even make a little comment there, and we'll, we'll try to give our perspective because we have an open conversation here so if you're watching us live you want to make a comment that's totally fine 
Um, but uh, for those of you who have just tuned in um, to us, um, you're, you're listening to Let's Chit Chat with Narayan Dad with our special guest, Manny. We're here live on 102.7 CKMS FM. There are three different ways to listen to us. You can listen to us on the regular dial 102, as I mentioned. You can listen to us on Rogers Digital Cable 946, and of course, worldwide on the web, songfm.ca. <laughs>
All right, uh, so we are back. Um, we are here live on Let's Chit Chat with Narayan Dad, our weekly show. We started this new show a few weeks ago. Every week we have um, different guests. Um, generally speaking, our guests, they are community-minded, um, really have community spirit, wanting to give back and wanting to make a difference. And our guest here today, uh, Manny, is no different. Very um, community-spirited type of person. I'm very happy to have you here, sir. Thank you for taking the time off your Thanks busy schedule um, to be here. Um, I know it's, it's, you know, anything we do in life, it is a commitment. You know, um, you took the time, um, you know, to, to make it here. Um, it is winter time now. The weather is not too bad, but it's it's not the best as well too. And and all that. The good thing is that I have my winter uh, tires on. <laughs> That's a good thing. Normally I'm really bad with that. I always leave it for next week, next week, and all of that. But this time I did it, and I felt accomplished. So I'm I'm really good with that. So anyways, um, prior to the break, we were talking about um, federal election. Election is so. If I was to summarize all of these things, you know, um. The one thing I can tell you, if you, I, I will say it now before I forget, you know, if you have never voted in your life before, consider um, keep an eye on these things, you know, um, when you have information come, uh, information come in the mail, you want to make sure you keep, keep a keen eye because the decision, you know, um, the politicians are making, it affects all of us in so many different ways and sometimes people are not realizing it. And, and so um, speaking of that, uh, we have federal election coming up here. We're not here to promote any particular party or individual or anything of that kind, but um, it is something that all of us, you know, all of us are politicians, you know, um, casting a vote, you know, uh, all of that, you're a politician in your own way, so you don't have to represent a party to be a politician, um, you know, um, you, you, you can participate, participate in so many different ways, but I'm interested to hear your perspective when it comes to this federal election. Um, obviously, the buzz is out there, um, um, you know, um, I know different parties are trying to get nomination, people... Um, you know, we know it's coming, you know. So what's your perspective here? I know we still have a few months more to go, but what are you hearing on the streets, if you know what I mean? <laughs> I think a uh, uh, couple, couple of issues, I think, that will come in the next uh, federal election. Uh, I won't name any party, but I'm just going to talk on the topics. So some of the topics, top, topics I would say, Try to would speak be... Some, yeah, there you go. Fantastic, yeah. Some of the top... 10 topics I would say would be one would be carbon tax, whether the people should pay the carbon tax or not, whether the industry should pay or not, whether they should get incentive or not. That's one other thing. And one of the pressing uh, issue right now in the globe, the not just in Canada, is how to fight climate change. So there is no denying, there is only a couple of people who deny climate change, but climate change is there. And it has been happening for many years. In the last few years, we have seen an increase and scientists blame on human activity. Still, I always say science, what we know today could be proven no, to, wrong tomorrow sure, based on sure. the advancement. So scientists could say something different tomorrow. But of course, we have to do our part. But the question is how? So that's where the debate has to happen uh, at the government level and people mm -hmm. like how we can fight climate change. The other issue is, which is non-political, but I always want to promote is use of plastics. Our oceans are getting filled with plastics. Mm -hmm. So how, as an individual citizens, we can basically resolve those issues. So some of them is, why can't we ban plastics? Plastic cutleries, plastic plates, all these plastic bags. Why can't we encourage biodegradable products? There's so many available in the developing countries for very cost-effective price. Why is it so expensive here? Mm -hmm. That's one thing. The other one is the First Nations issue. So right now we live in a very developed part of the world, but even within Ontario, if you go on the other side or the northern part of Canada, the First Nations are living at a terrible, far worse than developing country people, like so many in the rural parts of other parts of the world. So that has to be, government has to do something. I think the present government is trying to change that. But the question is Ottawa and First Nations is far apart. Mm -hmm. So the question is, they have to travel a lot. So do we have representation? Of course, the First Nations have their own representation, mm -hmm. but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. True, yeah. How the money is funneled, all those issues. And uh, But in terms of platform, right now, I'm not a leaning person like liberal, NDP, or conservative in general. But this time, I would say... Uh, I would, I'm leaning more towards the People's Party of Canada, supported by Maxim mm -hmm. Byrne. The reason is they already have platform published, mm -hmm. which means they have a clear vision. 
The other parties are just waiting and trying to see just before the closer to the election, there'll be platform. They're trying to do surveys. They'll try to judge what people want and put all those goodies just before the election. So that way, right now I'm leading to a PPC mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the platform. They have good platforms, very clear, precise. You agree, you disagree, that's totally different. But that's, I think, uh, having met Maxim Berner once, I felt he's a very genuine and honest person. And since it's a new party, it takes little time to come up. But I think very strong platform. In terms of platform, I haven't seen for a very long time in Canada a very good, strong, clear platform. A lot of things, uh, uh, streamlining the income tax, lowering the taxes, mm -hmm. all those things. And instead of uh, giving money to UN and other agencies, why don't we invest in uh, First Nations? develop their houses, create jobs there, the uh, First Nations community. A lot of things can be done, but it's all politics. Uh, you know, people sometimes take sides based on the political and affiliations they have, liberal NDP, they are all catering to their own vote bank, all parties. So I would say that in that way, I would say PPC is standing out differently. You agree or disagree, that's totally different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, so so um, based on what I'm hearing, I guess you're not going to that dinner this Friday. <laughs> I'm not saying more than that. There. But anyways, um, you know, um, I'm obviously I have social work background and so on, and so I never get bored. For me, you know, um, understanding and hearing, um, you know, issues when it comes to First Nations, you know, and so um. And I always wonder, you know, uh, what took us that long, really, to kind of make improvements and really make some really good improvements, not just talking about, but really kind of get action, get things moving and all of those types of things and so on. So um, thank you for bringing that up. Um, thanks for sharing. Um, and so we, we, um, we are... Um, we have about 15 minutes left for a show. And so what we uh, I like to do on the show here usually is to really... Um, I'm a job developer. Um, I help people who have difficulty finding jobs. So if you're an immigrant, recent graduate from college, university, and so on, I work with those population and all of that to really um, 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 you know, move them to the next level when it comes to um, employment and all that. Um, that's my area of expertise. So I really like to get uh, people's perspective um, on, on jobs, particularly in this region here, because all of us view things a little bit different. Obviously, there are lots of opportunities as well that are hidden and all of that. But I will, um, I would love to ask you and get your perspective and you know when it comes to those pieces. But before we do that, I definitely want to take this opportunity to say hello to um, Josie. Um, um, a former co-worker of mine, I'm watching us from Guelph. Um, we appreciate that. You work in Guelph too, right? <laughs> All right. So you see, there you go. We have people watching. Thank you. Um, um, Rakshi, thank you so much. Um, and then just join us uh, is uh, MC Droopy from Toronto. Um, um, these fellas are very supportive um, with the initiative we do locally here. In fact, uh, he performed uh, at our Caribbean Dreams concert, and this year um, he will be um, a, a performer again, and we'll be engaged a little bit more with our music piece and so on. And so these are guys that support all the things that we do here. So I guess the, at the end of the day, we all have to work together. And entry, uh, MC Drew P, um, I'm aware that you have your, e um, your event coming up. Um, in March, I will give details, um, you know, um, um, to our audience um, and so on. So not to worry about that. And I do plan in attending that event as well, too. And I'll talk to you one-on-one -on -one more um, about that as well, too. So um, we are going to take a short break. Um, you are watching and listening to us here. Let's chit chat with Narayan Dat, our weekly talk show, live on 102.7 CKMS FM. We are live every um, Wednesday from 10 a.m. until um, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Mm -hmm.
All right. Uh, welcome back to our talk show. Let's chit chat with Narayan Dad. We have here, this is our last stretch here now. And we have our guest here, Manny. And obviously, um, we've been talking about, you know, different issues happening, uh, particularly here in the region of Waterloo. But keep in mind, um, most of the issues that we have been talking about it, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's all, it's all over the place, you know, through the country, out of the country, North America, out of the country. I was talking to actually um, somebody from out of the country. Um, and, and they were also obviously talking about, you know, the economic um, challenge and finding good fit and so on. And speaking of good fit when it comes to job, when it comes to job, career and all of that, um, I'm very passionate about that because I'm a job developer. And so I work with uh, um, lots of immigrants, I'm helping them find meaningful work, recent graduate, college graduate, all of that and so on. And so I know that the stats here in the region of Waterloo in Canada as a whole, but uh, let's focus um, here locally in the region of Waterloo. I know the stats is low in terms of unemployment rate and so on. But one thing I know for sure is that many people are working, um, you know, um, doing a variety of different jobs that doesn't necessarily fit with their values or academic um, background and so on. So in your opinion, you know, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. Um, like, what is part of the problem here, you think? Because, I mean, ideally, um, I think everybody should be given some sort of, you know, that, that fair opportunity type of thing, so to speak. So what is, what is part of a problem, you think? I know that the employment rate is low. I'm aware of that. But still, I'm, I'm, I meet with people every day saying that, you know, I'm doing this kind of job. I have a master's. I have recently graduated. I've done all of that. But yet, I'm struggling finding a fit. So what's your take on that? I think a couple of uh, issues, but we have to separate <clears throat> who is not able to find the job. The, un uh, the unemployment rate, what we see is based on stats, is based on the EI recipient list. So a lot of people after one year, they can't find job. And then I don't think stats can have that statistic. So unemployment rate, the six person is basically, it's like an Alice in Wonderland kind of glossy picture. Mm -hmm. But in reality, I would basically receive a couple of like resumes. I don't ask them to send resumes. I just said, just send me a 10 line. Mm -hmm something about yourself and if there is some positive lead of course then we'll ask for the resume i see for a lot sure. of qualified like qualified means really qualified mm -hmm. people and what i see is the more qualified you are the more challenges you're going to face right so there are a couple of things so qualified in the sense people who have studied here mm -hmm. and people who have studied somewhere else and then they migrated to Canada. So there is a foreign credential issue. So a lot mm -hmm. of people with foreign credentials. Big like, problem. Of course, problem. doctors uh, are like, they can't qualify here. Mm -hmm. They have to come here and study. But my point is, if, if at the immigration level, if you know a doctor cannot find a job here, mm -hmm. why are you coming here? Unless that applicant has decided that I'm going to pursue. But even for, there is a quota limit, I believe not everybody can even appear for a doctor's exam, especially mm -hmm. when, if you have a foreign credential. Mm -hmm. So those challenges exist and a lot of people basically pick up odd jobs and the jobs that has nothing to do with mm -hmm. their, their qualification or experience for survival. And that basically reflects on the EIA also. Like, so people have jobs. There is no issue with finding a job here, but oh. job, finding a job in your own field is not that easy. That's and the right. more qualified you are, more challenges you have. You know, um, I have to mention this quickly. You mentioned about doctors and so on. And, and, to, and speaking of that, um, there was, uh, I'm just going to um, tell, you know, uh, um, I received an email this morning. Um, I, one of my clients actually um, happens to be um, a doctor, um, obviously from his country. And then he knew that I was um, off on vacation and so on. So he reached out back to me, you know, and he's saying to me, Narayan, you know, uh, I just want to touch base with you. Um, you know, um, because I'm ready to kind of get into the workforce, I'm still looking. And actually, um, he's a, he's a, um, a doctor, you know, um, or a doctor um, from his country. So when Manny was referring that, you know, we have doctors and all of that, um, you were saying the right thing. I, I, I want to, to clarify that to make sure people know that you're not just saying that because you just want to say it. But it's so true because I have um, clients, doctors, all of that. And when they come here, um, they are... Um, I get it, though, that their transition and their bits and pieces that people have to kind of do. But I, I, I feel like our base of what I'm hearing, I spoke to people, yeah, a few people yesterday. I do speak to people every day. I find that they challenge. Um, they're, they're, they are challenges, but I find that it, it doesn't really get easy, I find. I think the other issue yeah. is uh, we should have some sort of a rule or law which says when somebody says, ask you, mm -hmm. any new immigrant, do you have Canadian experience? 
I think that question itself tells you, like, do you have Canadian? So if you say no, then you are automatically disqualified. And sometimes what happens is uh, people are overqualified, and that also oh. basically <laughs> is another disadvantage. Yes. Right. So usually in an organization, when you have overqualified people, it's mm -hmm. always good. Right. It's always good to use their. But the other question is whether they will stay in the company or not. That's a different question. But it all depends. Yeah. Yes. So the, the employer usually they usually have that fear that if people are overqualified, because let's say you need, let's say you need a, a bachelor's or whatever to, to, to do that part of a task, you know, um, and then somebody with a PhD master apply for a job, you, um, even though the, the, the job seeker is saying to you, you know what, I am committed, I will be staying, I want to grow within the organization, I get it, you know, I've done that, but I'm willing to adjust in my life. Sometimes uh, employer, they want to buy into that because they're, they're afraid that they will invest into that person and then they might be gone. So you're right. So that affects people. So, um, and that's one of the reasons in some cases, um, people would not even shine out of those PhD pieces on the resume, right? Because they're afraid that they would even get a call, you know, for an interview or anything of that time. I think it'll be nice to have, especially in Waterloo region, it'll be nice to have a, like a job portal, basically where people who are seeking job or looking for a job can go and register so that we have a statistics how many people in Waterloo Region are actually looking for a job and how we can help in terms of the government and other programs can help find them a job. Right now, there is no way for public to actually know how many people are actually actively looking for jobs. Students are looking for jobs. Uh, new immigrants are looking for jobs. Canadians are looking for jobs, right? So that is another thing somebody could do, like have a, like a job registration site, which is open data like available to everyone of course for privacy reason we can hide some of the information but at least we have a stat and there should be a counter saying this person got job now that is mine i like that idea actually so maybe we will have to talk after the show here i really like that idea because i mean that it's nice to have those data so we know and then also i like the idea of um knowing who found themselves jobs exactly so they kind of know what's going on so there has to be a count because i always <laughs> yeah, believe yeah, without yeah. without measuring anything we can't get the actual success sure. rate right so listen um as you can see that we are coming to the end of this program here so is there any final word you would like to say to our audience we would love to have you back it was such an honor to have you to share your richness you know in terms of um your passion for the community and wanting to make things better really for the people around us so i personally would like to take this opportunity to thank you for coming oh thanks for inviting and, me um, we will have him back again so not to worry about that so any final word you have 15 seconds all I have to say is uh, federal elections are coming. Just please go and vote. If you don't like somebody, just still, you know, decide who you want to pick. Basically, best amongst the worst or worst amongst the best is up to you. But please go and vote. At least if we have 60 person, vote person in a democratic country, that will be really good. And I think this time we should try our best. People should go and vote. The other thing. Another thing is people should not be voting based on party affiliation. People should be voting based on platform and common sense uh, policies. So just decide based on that. It's not that somebody's on left, somebody's on right. You just go and vote and support. Just use your intellect and just go and vote. All right. So on that note, on behalf of myself and Manny, we would like to thank you for taking the time to tune into us. So until next week, Wednesday. We wish you all the best. Have yourself a great day and a better tomorrow. And please remember to tune into our weekly radio show, The Caribbean Spice, which airs live every Sunday from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, with a friend of mine, there was a no format because, well, we like it like that. He was out of his mind and I was way out of mind. And everything went backwards with words.